Hello YouTube, I'm Michael Size and if you follow my channel, you might know that I'm a big fan of what you could call 80-20 electrification. Solutions that electrify 80% of the problem for only 20% of the effort and cost. I've done this with cooking and hot water and now I'm cooking up a plan to do it with space heating. Heating is by far the biggest energy hog in most European households, so pulling an 80% on it would be massive, so here goes. The traditional heating paradigm is that you burn a fuel, the burning produces heat, and then you have a device whose task it is to divert as much of the heat as possible towards heating the actual building, while allowing as little of it as possible to escape alongside the flue gases. It is claimed by the industry that the efficiency of gas boilers approaches 100%, but I have my reasons to doubt that claim. In practice, I would guess that most people are getting closer to 85%, so for every 1 kilowatt hour of fuel that you burn, and thus get billed for, you get about 0.85 kilowatt hours of heat to the home. Traditional electric heating, such as a space heater, uses what's known as resistive heating, where 1 kilowatt hour of electricity gets turned into precisely 1 kilowatt hour of heat. This seems like an improvement compared to combustion on a restricted basis, but at a system level, if your electricity is coming from a gas power plant, this type of heating actually uses more gas, so more primary energy, and the price of electricity is about 4 times higher than the price of natural gas, so the cost of the heat would be almost 4 times higher as well. The solution then is heat pumps. Heat pumps are exactly what they sound like, they pump heat from one place to another. To understand this, imagine that you have two equal volume tanks of some working fluid, perhaps glycol, and one of them is at 55 degrees Celsius and the other is at negative 20 degrees Celsius. What a heat pump would be able to do is it would be able to remove even more heat from the cold tank, so perhaps chilling it to negative 30 degrees Celsius and dump that heat into the hotter tank, further heating it to perhaps 65 degrees Celsius. It's literally pumping heat around and in practice this would be a heat pump pulling heat out of the outdoor air and dumping it into the hot water that circulates through your heating circuit. The fact that they work like this is interesting, but the really cool part about heat pumps is that they manage to achieve this action while consuming way less energy than the amount of energy that they actually move. So for instance, they might consume only 1 kilowatt hour of electricity in order to move 3.4 kilowatt hours of heat, and we would call that a coefficient of performance or COP of 3.4. Informally, you can also refer to this as 340% efficiency. A COP of 3.4 is definitely achievable. At this point, your energy bill would be the same as if you were running on gas, despite the fact that electricity is 4 times more expensive, and also at this point, if you're getting your electricity from a combined cycle gas power plant, at the system level you would only be burning less than half as much gas as if you were heating on gas directly. So heat pumps might seem like the ideal choice for any home heating, but the problem is that a gas boiler can be installed for as little as a thousand dollars, while a heat pump that would work as a drop in replacement for that boiler can cost upwards of ten thousand dollars. And remember that at a COP of 3.4, your operational savings are nothing, which means that your payback time is never. But what's worse is that even if you do manage to eke out some operational savings, say if you were getting a COP of 4.4 perhaps instead of 3.4, the savings would only be a few hundred dollars per year, so your payback time would be decades. Now it turns out that people are actually installing these like crazy all over Europe for some reason, to the point where most people are stuck at finding a contractor because all of the installers are so busy. I find this fact surprising because of the previous discussion about payback times, but I do know of some circumstances that might make the financial aspect more attractive. First of all, the COP for any given heat pump increases as the temperature difference between the heat source and heat sink goes down. 
In a retrofit scenario, your radiators might be designed to work with water at 65 degrees Celsius, and if that's the case, your heat pump will have to produce 65 degrees Celsius. But in a new construction scenario, you could install very large radiators that could work at only 35 degrees Celsius, or you can even go to in-floor heating, which can be made to work as cool as 25 degrees Celsius. Not only does this increase the COP from 3 or 4 to 5 or 6, but it might also decrease hardware costs, because if you want, say, 6 kilowatts of nominal heating power, you might only need to put a 1 kilowatt compressor on it, whereas before you would have needed a 1.5 kilowatt compressor. So this is great on new construction and is great if you already have in-floor heating, but I don't want to have to start swapping out my radiators, much less tear up the flooring. And this is where air conditioning comes in. Air conditioners are nothing more than heat pumps. They remove heat from your home and dump it outside, and if they are engineered to be reversible, then they can also do the reverse and become an air-to-air -air heat pump. Right away it is obvious that an air-to-air -air heat pump does not need to produce air at 65 degrees Celsius, so you'd expect these devices to have fairly high COPs, and they do, in the range of 5 to 6 in fact you might expect them to have lower hardware costs and that they do too. On screen is a table with several products, actual products on the market from a real company and I believe that the most attractive option is the $1000 model. Notice how the nominal COP is 5, so that's the COP at 7 degrees Celsius outdoor temperature, but the seasonal COP is actually 5.1, slightly higher than the nominal, and that's because the heating season in Europe is actually not cold at all. We get our cold spells of course, but the heating season stretches from October 1st to April 30th. It is very long, but it is not terribly cold for most of the continent, which makes heat pumps that much more attractive. At a COP of 5 you are saving about 30% on your energy bill, compared to if you were heating with a gas boiler, and you are saving about 70% of carbon emissions, assuming that your electricity is coming from a combined cycle natural gas power plant. At the COP of 6 you are saving about 40% of your energy bill and about 75% of carbon emissions. So you can see why I am skeptical of the value of the more expensive options. And you can actually get even cheaper reversible ACs, but in my opinion anything below a nominal COP of 5 is cutting it too close on efficiency. A very cool thing about reversible ACs in my opinion is that if you use them to replace 80% of your winter heating demands, the amount of emissions that you save by running these instead of the gas boiler is 13 times greater than the amount of emissions you would cause by running them in cooling mode during the cooling season. Europeans for some reason have this misconception that air conditioning is uniquely wasteful in some way, yet the exact same Europeans who tell me that AC is bad for the climate or whatever will set their thermostat to 24 Celsius in winter and will drive 200 miles an hour on the autobahn. Air conditioning is really just a sip of energy compared to the natural gas guzzling of heating demand. And the single best thing you can do for the climate, except driving a Tesla perhaps, is replacing your combustion heating with heat pump heating. And to be clear, air conditioning should not be seen as optional either. No matter how much you may think you're adapted to a hot climate, the reality is that the productivity of humans starts to decrease as soon as indoor temperatures exceed 22 degrees Celsius, and the death rate of humans starts to increase as soon as outdoor temperatures exceed 19 degrees Celsius. 2023 will be the hottest year of our lives so far, as well as the coldest year for the rest of our lives, and climate adaptation is simply a necessity. So one of the coolest things about my solution with reversible air conditioning is that it not only offers lower hardware costs than a traditional heat pump, but it also offers higher functionality by also being an air conditioning, making the investment that much easier to justify. You can also use them more 
tactically than you can a traditional heating solution. Because while you could simply program it for winter and let it do its thing and probably achieve the advertised seasonal COP in this way, you can also play around with maximizing the COP by heating only at the warmest hours of the day and because the gas boiler remains in place if the weather is ever so cold that burning is actually more profitable, you can use the boiler instead. The small disadvantage is that these ACs have a minimum operating temperature, usually negative 15 degrees Celsius or so, which means that they are not technically a complete heating solution in the same way that a dedicated heat pump could be. The good thing is that, once again, the gas boiler stays in place, so you always have the backup if necessary. But this is why I'm regarding them as an 80-20 solution. And you can make this solution even more frugal by using a smaller number of ACs more strategically. If you have, say, four rooms all connected to the same living room, you probably don't need to get four ACs necessarily. You can likely just place one AC in the living room and get a lot of the heating and cooling to distribute to all of the other rooms, either by keeping the doors open when appropriate or simply thanks to interior walls being fairly good heat conductors in most cases, especially in Europe where they're usually made of solid brick. If carbon emissions are one of your primary concerns, another great thing about this solution is that you're not necessarily straining the heat pump supply chain. So if some of us go for reversible ACs as our decarbonization solution, we might be able to decarbonize quicker as a society than if we were all waiting in the queue for dedicated heat pumps. Because once again, many people in Europe do want them, but the industry is just backed up with demand. This is the case for dedicated heat pumps, but not at all for air conditioning as far as I can tell. And reversible ACs install just like any other mini split. And if you're up for some DIY, the great thing about installing your own mini split, as opposed to installing your own dedicated heat pump, is that you're not having to retrofit onto any existing system. Because it's kind of terrifying to mess around with your heating circuit, but mini splits are standalone, self contained devices. You just drill a hole through the wall and install. I haven't yet made the purchase for myself, but I do actually know people who have employed reversible ACs in very similar configurations and they told me that the theory has played out nicely in practice. The more of us that go ahead and install this solution, the cheaper that energy will get for everyone. Because remember, even if the heat pump is powered by a gas power plant, the total gas consumption still goes down. So demand goes down and prices follow. The lower gas prices will be good for the economy and they'll be even better for anyone who is unable to make the transition anytime soon. Thank you for watching and if you want to hear me report about my experience when I eventually do get this installed, make sure to use the subscribe button. There's also the notification bell if you want to subscribe twice at the same time.